Hey, welcome to Loose Change. Still much better than the book version. <laughs> I'm Jim Evans. Thanks for joining us, and you'll be so glad you did. As always, we have a great, great guest I'm really looking forward to talking with, so we'll get to that in just a moment. But first, what's going on? As usual, Greg, I'm at home, laying on the couch, Joe's in and out, TV's on, and I wake up and I, and I see what I think is the movie Predator 2. Man, I look closer, ah, it's just more news video of Deshaun Watson. <laughs> Boy, I can't wait for that to all happen for me. Uh, you know. We'll see. You may have heard about uh, Stephen F. Austin, perhaps a few weeks ago, played uh, a football game against um, NAIA small college Warner University out of Florida. And uh, somehow uh, Stephen F. Austin managed to eke out a 98-0 uh, win. But despite, despite that horribly lopsided score, there's good news for Warner they could still make the playoffs in the year 2048. So they have that to look forward to and work towards. Hey, Kim Kardashian in the news. She recently had to pay the Security Exchange Commission $1.26 million for some sort of uh, crypto asset uh, uh, endorsement she made. She wasn't supposed to. So. But I read where, uh, in an effort to maybe stir up some extra cash, she got a side hustle as a food delivery driver. And she'll go by Kim DoorDash. <laughs> I had to. I, I just had to. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, we do some silly stuff. So. This happened locally uh, not long ago. Police in Boardman cited a guy, a 53-year-old guy, for running a stop sign while he was riding a moped. <laughs> I think they got it backwards, Greg. The citation should have been for a 53-year-old guy riding a moped. <laughs> That's what you should get, get the ticket for. You know, you see that, uh, hey, Samantha, isn't that your friend uh, riding the moped? Yeah. Is he available? Said no one ever. <laughs> yes. Hey, stick around. Uh, Ryan Allison joins us next right here on Loose Change. Greg, you have a moped, right? Don't you? Supercharge your internet. Only Zoom Extreme from Armstrong combines unlimited data with whole home Wi-Fi. Delivered to you at the fastest speeds possible on our fiber optic network. Zoom Extreme from Armstrong. The future is faster. The future is now. Welcome back to Loose Change. I'm Jim Evans. See, I, I told you we had a, a great guest. <laughs> a recognizable guy for sure in our area. Thank you so much for joining us. It's the one, the only TV27 sports director Ryan Allison, great to see you. Thanks I for I appreciate in. you inviting me. You know what? We've been wanting to trying to do this for quite some time, so I'm glad it finally lined up for us. But uh, what we like to have our uh, our victims or our guests do yeah. uh, <laughs> off the top for those who don't know, a little background information: where you're from, where you went to school, and uh, how you got to where you're at. Sure, it's simple for me because I've never left home. Uh, I grew up in Warren and uh, went to Howland High School, graduated there, uh, went and pursued telecommunications at Youngstown State University, and. Uh, that's where I did my internship at WKBN right, my junior year mm -hmm. and had uh, an adjunct professor uh, that you were obviously close to and I was very close to and Tom Holden. Yep. And he recommended me for uh, WKBN. So when all of my colleagues were applying for internships at 15, 20 different places, I applied at one. I only wanted to work at WKBN and it was a big deal for me to be with Tom Holden. And he, uh, he's the reason that I'm there to this point, you know, 23, 24 years later. Holy cow. I, I still think of you're only 25, 26 yeah. <laughs> years old, so, but uh, you look great. And, uh, you know, when did you feel, when did you maybe arrive at a point in your life when, hey, I want to be in broadcasting? Well, you know, I, I didn't go to Youngstown State for telecommunications. I went there and then started just dabbling in it because I just love sports. And I played a lot of intramural sports and things like that, and, you know, and the old saying is if you can't, you know, if you can't play, then you better start learning how to talk about it, <laughs> you know. So uh, that's what I did, and Tom Holden was instrumental in some of those early classes with really fine-tuning your voice and delivery and things right. that were super important. And, and uh, you know, he said, I think you should come work for us. And I took that as like a badge of honor because I just looked up to him so much. So when I did my internship there, 
it was tough to get an internship back then. Yes. You know, it was tough to make no, $5 an hour every other hour. You know, uh, The news director at the time was Peter Special, mm -hmm. um, who was notoriously difficult. And, you know, very, very tough on He's me. pretty good Yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, but he, <laughs> he put me through the ringer. He did just for an internship interview. And he went through and told me how, you know, he wasn't impressed with my grade point average and all these things. And then said, it says down here that you have a reference of Tom Holden. Are you sure you know him? I said, well, I think so. Yeah. And he said, don't move out of that chair. And I sat there with my chair to the back, and then two minutes later, someone came in and put me in a headlock and messed up my hair there and said, was. is this the kid? I guess so. And he just shoved me to the side, and Peter said, you're lucky he did that. You know, it's yours, and it's because of Tom. So, um, and You said a badge of honor. It was, was for me as well, obviously, to work with him alongside, but... Uh, I took over his class at YSU, his announcing class, and that meant a lot to me. And, Absolutely. Uh, to be able to continue with that and uh, had a lot of fun. But um, so, uh, you know, after you get going, then, then you finally uh, maneuver into the position you're in right now. Uh, how, how did that path it, unfold? It took a little while because I, I started there as a production assistant. So I was behind the scenes shooting Tom's show every day, shooting your show every day, you know, when you were doing the five o'clock news. And, you know, then they promoted me uh, to photographer. I did that in news for about a year and a half, maybe almost two years. And then I just kept applying for uh, sports positions when it came open. And the answer was, no, you need experience. And mm -hmm. no, you need experience. And then, fine, quit bothering us. We'll give you a chance. And, <laughs> hey. and yeah, <laughs> so they did, you know, and they said, we'll let you try this on a, you know, trial basis. And, you know, it lasted for quite a while, but, you know, eventually they said, okay, I think this is going to work out. And, you know, then everything, you know, you stay there long enough, you know, you eventually yeah. get promoted to a point yeah. where right now I'm sports director, which is great because we've got great people in that yes. offense mm -hmm. office. And, and you just love coming to work every day and working with guys that you hired, that you like, you know, and people that are passionate about sports. Um, how has it changed, if at all, um, the... I guess the, the business itself and the business of, of running the sports department and going out and doing the things you do now from when you first started, if, if there's anything. To oh, mention. huge. Yeah, it seems drastic. Right, you know, right it's, for sure. Yeah, it's one of those businesses that I'm sure when you were there, you know, it moves at a, at a rapid pace. Yes. There's never anything that you can feel comfortable and say, okay, we're going to do, you know, the media right. changes. You know, when I started there, there were uh, reporters and photographers. And then I was the first to say, hey, listen, I'm going to be a multimedia journalist, so I'm going to shoot my own oh, highlights. Okay. And, and, you know, and that became the trend across the nation. I yes, certainly wasn't did. the yes. first in the nation, but in Youngstown, it became, you know, that's what we were leaning towards. So now everybody in my office shoots their own highlights. That was a big transition. But we've edited on probably five different things, you know what I mean, <laughs> you know, from tape to, yep. you know, to digital to, you know, now completely nonlinear. Um, we've used a million different cameras, a million different web systems. And, you know, we joke about it all the time that, it, you know, if people come in and we hear people say, I want to do this because that's the way it's always been done. You're not going to last very long. You know what I mean? Because everything just moves at such a rapid pace in TV. And now digital, that uh, what we were doing 25 years ago seems like a pleasant dream compared yeah. to what we have to Dinosaurs do on a daily there. base. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Roaming around. Right. But now you go out and like cover an event, a game, whatever, and edit right there, right? And get it. It, get it on the air. There's no one else to blame. You know what I mean? It's it. It's it. So, you know, we kind of pride ourselves on being able to go out there and, and one man ban these, these stories, these events. Um, and now we've got the tools. And don't get me wrong, over 25 years, the tools have gotten a lot better too. Yeah, right. You know, back in the day, if we wanted to go live, it was a truck or a satellite or something. Now it's a backpack, you know. Um, if we wanted to edit, we had to bring decks and tapes and yeah. every. And now everything's on a card, and we're doing it in the car. So everything moves faster and better. And when things get more complicated, the tools get better. So it's not necessarily harder; it's just different. Is it? It has it streamlined it for you, though. Absolutely. I mean, everything is. Seemingly, yeah. Yes, especially you know we work for NextStar, which is a big company, and they give you the tools. They invest in capital, and they tell you. What do you need to be able to do this? You know, we're more efficient than we were 20 years ago right. because of the tools that we have. So yeah. we're fortunate in that, in that regard because not every TV station has that stuff. You better be more efficient. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Or no, you don't last long, right? Yeah. Um, well, you guys do uh, so, so many things there. Uh, I envy you, you know, all the things you get to do. We 
weren't quite at the point of doing when I when I was there. But the, you know, have the game of the week and all the player profiles and uh, um, talk about that and how 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 do you uh, organize that and manage that whole yeah ship. Well, I'm glad you say that because it's that's one of the things that you know you try and make yourself valuable. So you're always trying to think what can we do outcide of the newscast right. or outside of this. And you know we started game of the week, which was a big deal for Absolutely. us. You know, and it's progressed over 20 years till you know now it's live, now it's digital, now it's live streamed. You know, it's popular. People recognize the name, and yep. you know, it, like with what you do, when you walk into some place, people know who you are. They know the event. They know you know where to listen and where to watch, and and that's a that's a big thing for us. So we're you know, insanely proud of you know game of the week, and we put a lot of effort and time into it. But you know, we've started. You know, Big Twenty Two was a big thing for us. Yeah, started ask about, you about that. Mm-hmm. eighteen years ago, and you know, it started as just an idea. Um, like, do these all state awards, you know, still stack up? Are we being fairly represented? You know what I mean in the state? And and some of the coaches thought, no, we're not. So we just decided to create our own, and we made it completely about coaches and media members, and 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 take the you know the opinions away from grandma and grandpa's you know what i mean and and one person and just say hey let's make this democratic and and insulate ourselves so that we can put out the fairest thing and it's become a really really fun thing for us and you know it's it's nice when people talk about it and we hear we see kids wearing shirts and yeah. showing up on you know nfl bios you know it's big 22 <laughs> wkbn that's cool for us we mm-hmm. love that stuff absolutely and the players from what i've been able to catch uh, they're really into it yeah well, you know, we did a banquet for a number of years. We stopped during COVID, right. but the banquet was a big deal. And it started out like, let's just invite all these kids into one room. And, you know, a kid from Hubbard gets to hang out with a kid from Greenville, yep. you know, and a kid from East Liverpool gets to meet a kid from Mooney. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was really cool to watch these kids kind of rub shoulders and then say, hey, you're going to Ohio State. I'm going to Ohio State. Let's, you know, room up. And it was fun. And then it became a television event, you know, then or a live stream event. Then it became a live television event, and the stress level just kept getting bigger and bigger, you know, <laughs> to a point where we thought, uh, you know, what's next? Like, how much can it bigger? Um, and now it's at a point where you know people just care about, did I make it? You know, did I get invited yeah. to the station? Can I get in front of a green screen and have some fun with a football and put it on my college application that I was part of this or whatever? So we're probably getting back to a banquet here pretty quick. Yeah, was, yeah, um, but the live television show never ended. We still do that. Mm-hmm. Um, going out, you know, Friday night, obviously, you know, football is the, the thing right now. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, talk about that and how you put that together, how you cover all that you do and, and, you know, put it all together and get it on the air. Yeah. You know, when I was working with you, it was – elaborate then too you know we were covering a lot of games on a Friday Mm -hmm. night and we were running tapes back and the editing process was laborious you know what I mean to get everything on and get it and do it quickly yes Um, it's still very hectic it's just different you know we go out I send you know six or seven crews out to different games they'll go get two or three games and then they will literally uh, edit in the field you know, yep. so the advantage to us now is we can send people and have them stay to the end of games and we can talk to players right, right. afterwards. And, you know, we were missing that back in the day, the reaction and the game-winning field goals. And now we're able to capture a little bit more of that because of the ability to go out there, shoot games, edit the car, send it back, and then, you know, put it all together real quick. Do you hit every game in the area? Or is that, no. Uh, it's so no. hard to do. It's we, a, we couldn't possibly. Yeah, you know, on any, given, on any given week, you know, we have competitors that do lots of games, and, and that's great. We try and do, you know, important games, and we try and spread it out so we can see everybody and put together good matchups. And, you know, so on any given Friday night, we're somewhere around 15 games, you know what I mean, which is a lot. Yes. Because um, that's 30 teams. But there's probably 25 local games every Friday night. You know, I remember um, when I was there, they had a consultant come in from Dallas, I believe it was, and they looking at looked at everything, what we were doing there as a whole. But then, you know, they focused on sports, and they call us in to uh, the office, and they said uh, we did a survey about sports, and uh, our research shows that sports is not that big of a deal here in this area <laughs> and I stopped and we everybody looked around. I was like where are the cameras at yeah. <laughs> we're, we're getting pumped here this is a prank right <laughs> who who could you have possibly talked to I but know. you know uh, yeah. how, how big it is here and it's not just specific to our area but 
any, any yeah, every Friday night, uh, half of, if not three quarters of all the small towns are there at the games. We always joke when we do our preseason presentation that there are more people out at high school football games on Friday night than in voting booths on election day. Yeah. And that's reality. Yes. You know, it's a big deal. And every corporate, you know, person that's ever come in and talked to our place will tell will sit down and say, listen, we have these grand ideas about sports in their place, except here. We get it. We see what you do with Game of the Week and Big Twenty Two and you've got sponsors and you've got people that come out of the woodwork to help you make this happen. We're not gonna touch it. And it's great right now, you know what I mean, because uh, they value it and they see, you know, the value in it from from you know from a, a valley standpoint, if you don't have it, boy, yeah, you know, what's the alternative? Right, right. Hey, we have to take a break. You hang around, right? Absolutely. All right, we're going to do that, and we'll be back with Ryan Allison right after we do this here on Loose Change. Distance Pro Wi Fi from Armstrong Business Solutions is more than just Wi Fi. It enhances productivity, tightens security, and is tailor-made for small business. Take control over guest networks with a branded portal, protect sensitive data, and manage staff with the WorkPass app. Business Pro Wi-Fi gives you customer insight, turning analytics into opportunities. Get a fully connected business intelligence platform in the palm of your hand. Business Pro Wi-Fi from Armstrong Business Solutions. Welcome back to Loose Change. I'm Jim Evans and uh, with Ryan Allison here, TV27 Sports Director, right in the middle of uh, high school football. The best yeah. fast of 10 weeks of the year. And then and then after that, you know, we take it a week at a time <laughs> and, and see what happens. But you know what? Uh, you get a chance, when I get a chance to watch, how is uh, like the actual sports casts, how have they changed? It's, it's not like it yeah. quite used to be. Uh, as well. Right. It used to be appointment 6 and 11 o'clock. You know, you were doing a sports cast every right. day. Now we don't do sports casts in the evening shows, even though we have more newscasts. We have a 5, a 5.30, a 6. We don't do a sports cast in there. We still do a nightly sports cast because we need that recap of what the Guardians are doing or the Pirates Correct. or whatever. But for the most part, we do stories. And that's really what we're tasked to do on a daily basis. And more so than ever before, about three years ago, we went from television to a digital-first sports department. Yeah. So everything we do is based on how will right. this do online. And we noticed, you know, shortly thereafter that our audience online was bigger than our television audience. So we really tried to be number one in both of those lanes. And that's our task every single day. How do we, you know, do great news on TV, but how does this translate to the web? How does the WKBN.com benefit from this? Do people want to read these stories? Do they want to watch these videos? And there's a ton of science behind it. There's some really smart people, way smarter than me behind the scenes that help and say, hey, listen, this was good, but if you title it this way, you're a little bit better. Or that. And, and that's the good part about what we're doing is that, you know, you look down the road and you think, what's the future of this business? That's the future. Yeah. You know, I've got two boys that will never sit down and watch a newscast. You know, they will never sit down Hardly and watch anything, TV. Yeah. Everything's on their phone, everything's mm -hmm. immediate. So if you're not in that lane, if you're not, you know, pursuing that, you know, I don't know what the future holds for you because it's really, that's how almost, I, and you know, you and I are the same way. I'm on my phone all the time too, you know, trying to find something out. So yep. it's changed my behavior and viewing habits too. Well, with that, the, you know, the consumer, the viewer, the listener, or whatever, can, mm -hmm. can get the nuts and bolts stuff and then allows you to do more feature type yep. things uh, yeah. with what you're doing. And you know, you know, back when you were there, it, it was, we need this to be in a minute and 20 seconds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Or a minute 30. And half of, the, half of the, the task was how do I take this complex story or this really important feature or this highlight about some and, and cut it down so it fits. And on the web, there's, there's no limit. So if you come back and say, hey, listen, that story I did seven and a half minutes, they're like, okay, great. You know, so you can really kind of stretch your legs and do things the right way. You know, you mentioned the player profiles. We invited 90 players to our station and we did interviews with them similar to what we're doing right yeah, now. Yeah, and it was, you know, funny mm -hmm. and like, you know, to get, to get to know them and they are what they are. Some are two and a half minutes, some are five minutes and it doesn't matter because, you know, we're not in those TV time constraints. And in those newscasts, those TV time constraints are, are real. You know, I mean, you only right. have a 30-minute show. You're talking maybe right. 26 minutes of content. It's difficult mm -hmm. to say, hey, I need more time to tell this story when somebody's doing something also very important. Yeah. You know, doing those the profiles, the features on, on the kids, 
I got to think that the coaches are very receptive to that to have their young men have an opportunity, not just young men, there's young women who do a lot yeah. of the sports, and uh, to have that opportunity to, to do something like that and be featured. It's, honestly, sometimes we have to, we have to try and cap it yeah. because it's difficult for a coach to say, well, who are my best players? Yeah, I can't yeah. give you one or two, I got to give you seven. And there's times where I'm like, there's no way seven of these kids can make Big 22. It's never happened. There's never mm -hmm. been more than three. But then you look at a team like Austin Town Fitch, and you're like, okay, I get it. You know, there's seven really good players yeah. on there. Or Ursuline. And they're like, well, we got eight. And you look at these guys, and you're like, how do you pick and choose? Yeah, that's a good point. So yeah. we, you know, we do, you know, kind of stretch our legs and say, hey, listen, let's let the, the, the best athletes in the area come here. And, you know, you mentioned, you know, uh, girls sports. We're going to start that this year with basketball so that we can invite some of those girls basketball players along with boys basketball players to the station, and we're not just so football driven. Yeah. Well, that's what's really cool about the, the Game of the Week uh, uh, concept and what you guys do, which is a terrific job, by the way. But, you, you know, you, you, football is a thing, but uh, you continue on into basketball and, mm -hmm. and beyond that. So, you know, it's a round-the-clock uh, thing. Round, uh, We'd like long. it. We'd like it to be year-round. You know, last year we started doing college football on Saturdays. Yeah, we wanted yep, to try yep, and do yep, that, so we that. reached mm -hmm. out to Westminster and – you know, Mount Union, and this year we added Slippery Rock, mm -hmm. and obviously Teal and Grove City have been a part of it, which is great. Um, and, you know, we do a couple volleyball games. Next week we'll do two volleyball games. So, you know, we're trying to, you know, get this at top of mind and, and do, you know, two, three games a week into basketball season. The sponsors for basketball want to do more games. You know what I mean? They, they want more. They want girls and boys basketball even. And, you know, let's how, how far can we get into the tournament? So, you know, once we figure out how to do a track event, you know what I mean, or, or baseball is very difficult. It's just from a right. logistic standpoint right, right. to shoot something on a field that size. Yep. Um, we have done baseball and stuff like that. We've mm -hmm. done Little League baseball, wrestling, yeah. you know, and uh, it's easy for me to say, hey, listen, let's do it. It's another thing right. to have Chad go, hey, I don't know anything about volleyball. <laughs> yeah, we'll learn about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's do it. Here's the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's uh, Bill Bullett was involved oh. in the original production, and now, you know, Mike uh, Roscoe mm -hmm. and you guys, just, the, 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 just the, the production element, the whole thing is just really terrific. Uh, I, I'm not going to say just for, for a market this size, really, anywhere, mm -hmm. doing this every week. I appreciate you saying that. Bill Bullett was, you know, yeah, kind man. of the father of this thing. Yeah. You know, he helped build the truck out of the back of a van. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was our first production truck. Yeah. Now we drive two box trucks with oh, yeah. a quarter of a million dollars in this one. And, you know, I mean, it just in equipment and, you know, turning the whole thing HD and being able to do it digital, it's come a long way from, uh, but Bill was part of building those trucks too. You know, Mike Roscoe, um, you know, and, and Jamie Bates have been directing those for, mm -hmm. for a long time and they do a phenomenal job of, you know, understanding, okay, how are we going to shoot volleyball? How are we going to shoot yeah, wrestling? Yeah, How do we shoot Little League? Mm -hmm. Those are really difficult, dynamic, different mm -hmm. things. And, you know, the audience doesn't care that it's difficult. Right. They just go, this doesn't look good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if it doesn't look good, then it doesn't work. Welcome back to Loose Change. I'm Jim Evans and uh, with Ryan Allison here, TV27 Sports Director, right in the middle of uh, high school football. The best yeah. time. Fastest 10 weeks of the year. And then, and then after that, you know, we take it a week at a time. <laughs> And see what happens, but you know what? Uh, you get a chance when I get a chance to watch. How is uh, like the actual sports casts? How have they changed? It's, it's not like it yeah. quite used to be uh, as well. Right. It used to be appointment six and eleven o'clock. You know, you were doing a sports cast That's every right. day. Now we don't do sports casts in the evening shows, even though we have more newscasts. We have a five, a five thirty, a six. We don't do a sports cast in there. We still do a nightly sports cast because we need that recap of what the Guardians are doing or the Pirates Correct. or whatever. But for the most part, we do stories. And that's really what we're tasked to do on a daily basis. And more so than ever before, about three years ago, we went from television to a digital first sports department. Yeah. So everything we do is based on how we'll right. just do online. And we noticed, you know, shortly thereafter that our audience online was bigger than our television audience. So we really tried to be number one in both of those lanes. And that's our task every single day. How do we you know, do great news on TV, but how does this translate to the web? How does the WKBN.com benefit from this? Do people want to read these stories? Do they want to watch these videos? 
and there's a ton of science behind it. There's some really smart people, way smarter than me behind the scenes that help and say, hey, listen, this was good, but if you title it this way, you're a little bit better. Or the, and, and that's the good part about what we're doing is that, you know, you look down the road and you think, what's the future of this business? That's the future. Yeah. You know, I've got two boys that will never sit down and watch a newscast. You know, they will never sit down Hardly and watch TV. It, yeah. Everything's on their phone. Everything's mm -hmm. immediate. So if you're not in that lane, if you're not, you know, pursuing that, you know, I don't know what the future holds for you because it's really, that's how almost, and you know, you and I are the same way. I'm on my phone all the time too, you know, trying to find something out. So yep. it's changed my behavior and viewing habits too. Well, with that, that you know, the consumer, or the viewer, or the listener, or whatever, can, mm -hmm. can get the nuts and bolts stuff and then allows you to do more feature type yep. things uh, yeah. with what you're doing. And you know, you know, back when you were there, it, it was... We need this to be in a minute and twenty seconds. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah, right? Or a minute thirty. And half of the half of the the task was how do I take this complex story or this really important feature or this highlight about some and, and cut it down so it fits. And on the web, there's there's no limit. So if you come back and say, hey, listen, that story I did seven and a half minutes, they're like, okay, great. You know, so you can really kind of stretch your legs and do things the right way. You know, you mentioned the player profiles. We invited. 90 players to our station and we did interviews with them similar to what we're doing right yeah, now yeah, and it was you know funny mm -hmm. and like you know to get to get to know them and they are what they are some are two and a half minutes some are five minutes and it doesn't matter because you know we're not in those tv time constraints and in those newscasts those tv time constraints are are real you know I mean, you only right. have a 30 minute show you're talking maybe right. 26 minutes of content it's difficult mm -hmm. to say hey i need more time to tell this story when somebody's doing something also very important. Yeah, you know, doing those, the profiles, the features on, on the kids, I gotta think that the coaches are very receptive to that, to have their young men have an opportunity, not just young men, there's young women who do a lot yeah. of the sports, and uh, to have that opportunity to, to do something like that and be featured. It's, honestly, sometimes we have to, we have to try and cap it. Yeah. Because it's difficult for a coach to say, well, who are my best players? Yeah, I can't yeah. give you one or two, I gotta give you seven. And there's times where I'm like, there's no way seven of these kids can make Big 22. It's never happened. There's mm -hmm. never been more than three. But then you look at a team like Austin Town Fitch, and you're like, okay, I get it. You know, there's seven really good players yeah. on there. Or Ursuline. And they're like, well, we got eight. And you look at these guys, and you're like, how do you pick and choose? Yeah, that's a good point. So yeah. we, you know, we do, you know, kind of stretch our legs and say, hey, listen, let's let the, the, the best athletes in the area come here. And, you know, you mentioned, you know, uh, girls sports. We're going to start that this year with basketball so that we can invite some of those girls basketball players along with boys basketball players to the station and we're not just so football driven. Yeah. Well, that's what's really cool about the, the game of the week uh, uh, concept and what you guys do, which is a terrific job, by the way. But, you, you know, it, you, football is a thing, but uh, you continue on into basketball and, mm -hmm. and beyond that. So, you know, it's a round the clock uh, thing. Round, uh, We'd like long. it. We'd like it to be year round. You know, last year we started doing college football on Saturdays because yeah, we wanted yep, to try yep, and do that. So we that. reached mm -hmm. out to Westminster and you know, Mount Union, and this year we added Slippery Rock, mm -hmm. and obviously Teal and Grove City have been a part of it, which is great. Um, and, you know, we do a couple volleyball games. Next week we'll do two volleyball games. So, you know, we're trying to, you know, get this at top of mind and, and do, you know, two, three games a week in the basketball season. The sponsors for basketball want to do more games. You know what I mean? They, they want more. They want girls and boys basketball even. And, you know, let's how, how far can we get into the tournament? So um, we have done baseball and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We've done Little League baseball, wrestling, yeah. you know, and uh, it's easy. Supercharge your internet. Only Zoom Extreme from Armstrong combines unlimited data with whole home Wi-Fi. Deliver to you at the fastest speeds possible on our fiber optic network. Zoom Extreme from Armstrong. The future is faster. The future is now. Well, that's going to do it for our show. Thanks so much to Ryan Allison. Best of luck to him and his great crew at the TV27 covering all the sports that they do and what they do for our Valley. Thanks to Greg Roten and to all of you. Check us out on YouTube, Armstrong Loose Change. I'm Jim Evans. We'll catch you next time right here on Loose Change. We will. Get that moped. <laughs>